What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Savage Lands. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little bit and get our heat meter back up. As you can see, I've been sitting here for about 5 minutes and it's back up to like maybe 35-ish, 40. It takes a little while for your heat meter to come back and that's also another reason why I put our base where I put it. I like mining in this game. I'm like one of those people that can just sit and bang on a wall for like hours and just have fun doing it. And that's actually what we need to do right now. And so I'm going to start off by making a hammer. And when you want to mine something, you just find a rock, like right here. And this was what I was going to do all night. I was going to do it off camera, but I did want to show people how you mine objects. You just find a rock, you get a hammer, and then you just sit here. You hold it down, and eventually rocks and ore will pop out. And that's the way that the universe works. This is exactly where your forks and your knives came from, your cutlery. Somewhere off in the distance, there's just a viking hitting a rock, and forks pop out eventually, and then there it is. That's how your stuff gets made. But yeah, it's worth it to sit here for a while and do this for a bit, just to see what you can get out, because we need to make storage objects. I do wish that it took a few less strokes in order to mine, but I get it. This is the worst mining object in the game, and so it makes sense from that corner, I suppose. But as of right now, I think this is actually the only hammer that you can get. I don't even know if you can get a metal hammer. If you can, we should probably try that one out. It might work out a little bit better for us getting our stuff together. But as you can see, this is a great way. I would always build your campfire up against a rock so that while you're chilling or you're just waiting for, like, nightfall to go away because it is pretty dark at night, it's not super dark. It's manageable. In fact, I like this level of light. This level of light is a little bit generous, but at the same time, I've never understood why so many games that involve survivalism and camping are so dark at night. It's not that dark at night. You can navigate fairly well in the pitch black, even in the forest. Like, when, as long as you've got some sliver of moon out, you should have some light once your eyes adjust. Your eyes are actually adapted to doing those sorts of things. We don't have tapetums like a lot of animals have. If you don't know what a tapetum is, a tapetum is essentially inside of an animal's eye. There's a little filament. And you know how sometimes when you're driving down the street or when you're on your bike or whatever and you've got like a headlamp on the front of it, it catches the animal's eye and it glows back at you? It's called a tapetum. That's what's causing that to happen. It makes their eyes glow like they're possessed by the deer devil. And so anyways, the tapetum allows them to reflect light back outwards, kind of like mini flashlights. It makes it easier for them to see when it's dark out. And so I figured I would talk about that while we wait for our pile O loot down here to sort of like formulate. I don't know if we're going to get anything good out of this, but I figured I would show you the mining process before I cut the video because it's going to be that guy. Like the second I cut, and I'm, I don't mean this to be like grouchy but every time like I cut something out there's that guy that like wanted to see it or like didn't know how to do it in his video and so he then he's like oh man I was watching your series just to find out how to do this and so now unsubscribed and it's not that I just want to make sure that I'm giving people the information that they need in order to play the game because a lot of people I've seen this complaint over and over on the forums apparently a lot of people are not aware of the fact that you can actually mine in this game it looks like we actually were very unlucky with that last little go so we got ourselves a lot of flint, but unfortunately we didn't get a lot of metal. So we got three low quality metal. What do we need in order to make our lockbox? Because that's what we need to make next. So to get our lockbox, we need three medium quality. We need some sinew and we need some wood logs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang out right here for a minute. I'm just going to keep mining. That's it. I've showed you guys how to mine. I figure that I can like safely edit this out at this point. And so I'll come back once we've got the stuff together that we're going to need in order to get our further projects completed. I'll see you later. Alright everybody, I used about, I don't know, four or five hammers worth of stuff, and if you wanted to see the loot that I got out of here, I did a lot of mining, and unfortunately we didn't come out with a whole lot. We got a lot of low quality metal ore, but we didn't have a lot of luck getting the medium quality metal ore that we need, and so I'm thinking you might have to find better rocks for that, it might be around. For right now though, we're completely and totally out of food. Oh, we got some amber too, in case you were wondering, but the amber is valuable, so I don't leave it on the ground. I get worried about my amber. You need it every now and again, so what is amber used for? Amber is used every now and again. For creating like items that are a little bit more awesome than other items. I can't really tell you much more than that because I've only ever used them on a build once or twice. But it seemed like the thing that I was building was pretty swell. It seemed like the sort of thing that you would really, really, really want to have in your inventory. So my guess is that it goes into complicated builds. But for right now, we probably want to chop down a couple of trees. We need to get our lean-to going. And since it's nighttime, I apologize for the darkness. I could throw a torch up, I guess. But for right now, we need twigs, we need logs, and we need some other stuff. I'll try and get it all isolated as to what we need in just a second. Let's see here. To make our lean-to, so this is our respawn point. It takes four sinews, eight sticks, and four logs. Okay, we're definitely going to have to go hunting, too, because I don't know if you knew this, but looking at our stamina meter right now, we're completely and totally out of food. Like, I ate our last food supply just a minute ago. I played for about 30 minutes in between the last cut, just trying to get stuff into play where I wanted it to be. And unfortunately, that might have put us a little behind the eight ball with regards to our feeding situation. Luckily, the deer are never in short supply. They're frequently in short temper, but rarely in short supply. So there it is. Catch our logs as they fall down. And that's going to leave us with an inventory 
full of lovely, lovely logs. And then we'll take these. There it is. And we'll turn those all into sticks. We need flint in order to make a torch. But I don't think that's going to be conducive to our hunting efforts. Deer are very photosensitive, so I figure we'll probably leave it alone. They are kind of dumb, though. I don't know. You might be able to... There's not a whole lot of animals. That, eh, I mean, I'm not going to say that they're super stupid. Because there are definitely dumber animals. But deer are not the brightest... Eh, they are not the brightest torch in the batch. That's for sure. Let's see here. We need to find ourselves some deer. So let's go back inland. There's our other campsite right there. The one that we had found in the beginning of the game. I don't know if anything respawns around it. Let's go have a look because certain resources in this game tend to respawn. Additionally, since it's nighttime, our cold meter is dropping off really, really quickly. I'm hoping that we'll be able to find some kind of sustenance around here somewhere. But as of right now, it does not appear to be the most forthcoming of resource. That's 62% stamina left. So that's good, but... When it's nighttime, your coldness drops off really, really fast. So we just got to kind of like hang out around. Oh, it does. Look, things respawn. Huh. Well, that's cool. That's good to know. Oh, a metal axe. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that in a heartbeat. So let's see here. Now that we have a metal axe, we can actually more than likely just kind of like keep that one in reserve for right now. The metal axe, I think, just works a little bit better as a weapon. Oh, no, wait. You can tell the difference between the stats. There, There's damage right there. So what if I, if I go over to there? What does that mean? That's going to give us 12 damage. Oh, yeah, it does. It adjusts them. Okay, so the thing that I said in the previous episode where there's no way to, like, compare between things, completely and totally false. As usual, Splattercat is lying to you because he's a giant, greeny, meanie face. Oh, and that tree. I'm going to try and catch the logs before they hit the ground. There we go. Let's continue forward. We need these logs anyways when we go back to base camp, so I figure we stand close enough to a fire, chop down some trees. It won't be a complete and total utter waste of time. I'd like to solidify our stick stock right now which are just one key away from one another our stick stock i think that we've got six right there yeah let's turn those all into sticks right now because we are going to need them in the future so wooden sticks there it is what happened oh it dropped them into a separate pile okay so now we've got two stacks of sticks that's okay though a stack a stick and a stock just a vowel away from one another so different and yet so similar is this close enough to still glean a fire bonus? It's not? Okay, so unfortunately, you spend a lot of time huddled around a fire in this game, and it's just something you have to get used to. I can't do anything else with this over here, can I? That is very, very sad and makes me not so glad, and also makes me slightly mad because I feel as though I've been had by you, fire! It's your fault. It's all your fault, immolating object. How dare you? How dare you burst and combust near me with your chemical reactions and cause me to be so nearly attached to your demesne, your domain. I don't know how to say that word. It's got an S in it and it makes me confused. It's got an S, the E is in the wrong spot. It's like demesne. Eh, it's a confusing word and it makes me sad and so I try not to think about it. Honestly, what I'm waiting for right now is for some very, very poor deer to walk by that's not aware of us and then I'm gonna run up and clip him real fast in the face with this mace and leave his body gone without a trace so I can shove his body in my face and then that way I can sate the rate of our stamina falling apart. We can sate the rate of the spate. I don't know. I got nothing left. I'm running out of objects right now. I've rhymed a lot of things in a row. And as of right now, I'm feeling like they're basically no longer... Okay, so we're back up to 80% heat. Let's just go for it. We're going to run out of stamina before we run out of heat here. So I think we should probably get on it before it's too late. The sun should be coming up pretty soon. It's like right there. The sun on this planet's weird like that where... Does it even move? Yeah, it's going up in the sky right now. So since it's going up, we need to get down with handling some of the random deer that need to be slaughtered in this area. There's like 30 of them out in the ocean, and I wanted to go get them, but I felt like it was a bad plan. God, we're already down by 10%. It is so hard to keep yourself warm in this game when you're out like in the middle of nowhere at night. It makes sense, though. I'm not going to... I like how you can see the flames from a long ways off, though. Help you find your way home. Not a bad plan, actually, if you're trying to navigate to create signal fires. To just help you move back to wherever your basic base camp is. Ooh, I found my slippers below the desk right now. I was just playing footsies all by my lonesome with the under desk. And for right now, don't worry about the under desk. It's kind of like this sentient being that lives under my desk. I try to... I try to keep him... Oh, we got a Zed over here. That's okay. Ow. Alright, I'm going to murder you real fast because I need your body parts in order to make bags out of. Oh, you didn't drop flesh. You didn't drop flesh, you little bastard. I needed a pound of flesh for your transgressions and you've given me naught. You've given me naught but bone to work with. Unfortunate. I'm hoping that our coldness will at least hold out until daybreak. I don't know. I heard like a big rumble. It made me nervous. I thought that perhaps... 
Mayhaps there might be a monster around who wanted a sample of our flesh. It is delicious flesh. I've tried to keep it supple. I use oyster. I, I use moisturizer a lot. A little bit of just random supplementation to make sure that my hands, when I touch on the Viking ladies, are nice and soft. You know, just in case. You want her to be like, ow, there's a callus on your, like, whatever finger. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's from, you know, back in the day when I was doing hard labor. Hard Viking labor. Let's see here. Why are there no deer around? I would like very, very much for there to be a deer around so that I could smack him in the face with my hammer and then eat. Oh, there's deer right there. I'm going to eat your body. Oh, deer, I'm looking at you right now, and you look so delicious. I need you. What I need you to do right now, deer, is I need you to be on board with what's about. Oh, you little bastards. You little bastards. They took off running. I should have done that differently. Oh, but there's a little camp shack out here just in case you wanted one. Cloth shreds, stone axe, and some apples just in case. Just, you know, some backup apples. Just in case. Backup apples. So I think these deer are too crafty for me. We're going to have to sneak up on them. They know what's going to happen. They're aware of our history among deer kind. They're actually running away pretty fast. They're not even, like, waiting to see what's going to happen. It's probably a wise choice. I see a skeleton over here. I don't know if you see him, but I see him. And I would like his body to be with us. Maybe give us some flesh. Yeah. Come on, Skeletor. Drop those drawers and let me have your flesh. He gave it. What is that? Bone dust? Okay. I don't feel like that's that useful, but I'll take it, I suppose, for right now. We could definitely use a deer right about now. We've been making it by on random ground apples that we've been pricking up like along the way. And while I like my apples to be grounded, I have I can't have them conducting current. It's too dangerous. While I do like them grounded, I think that perhaps for right now we're going to let them off. Grounding, it's a good punishment. It's a good punishment. I hated getting grounded when I was a kid. I was constantly getting grounded because I was always in trouble. I was a little troublemaking kid. I talk about that a lot, but I was always in trouble when I was a kid. I was grounded for like six months at a time. I'm not even joking you right now. This is not like humor being bequeathed upon you. Oh, look, there's another skelly over here. Maybe I'll fight with him and see if we can get another bag. How's that sound? Ow. Please stop striking me. I think our armor might be taking the brunt of this assault right now. And in fact, I think it is. Our boots already broke. That's unfortunate. He only dropped a bone, so... Damn. We need to find ourselves some... We really, really, really need some desiccated flesh to make another bag out of. Or more wolves. Really anything will do at this point. Unfortunately... Doesn't appear to be a whole lot of wildlife around here. I think we might be up shit's creek without the proverbial object for keeping our trajectory moving in a singular direction. The flattened stick for the creation of a movement vector. Hmm. Well, I'm hoping we don't starve to death, but for right now, we got to worry about our warmth a lot more than we got to worry about starving to death because we did find some apples. And for once, I did like them apples. Most people ask that in sort of a sarcastic tone, like, how do you like them apples? Oh, I just totally ganked you in-game. But I'm the sort of person that I frequently do enjoy apples. I do like them apples. When I eat apples, I prefer them to not be of the Granny Smith variety. I don't know which I, I like the ones there. Oh, what are they called? It's just going to bug me that I can't remember this now. They're the green ones. The, the green ones that are very, very sweet. I think they come up from in, like, Seattle or, like, Washington somewhere. I don't know. They're delicious, though. And they're very, very sweet. With a little bit of tang on the side. Just a little bit of extra tang in case you're into that sort of thing. Well, I guess what we could do for right now is we could walk the beach. I'm not a fan of how quickly your cold meter falls off. I wish that it was a little bit more merciful. Just because it's not, like, in terms of me playing... Oh, look. There's a deer over here. All right. Let's see if we can take him. Let's see if we can take him. Or her. Or it. Or whatever. You're mine, de No! No! How dare you- Oh, damn it. Okay, so now we have, like, a real problem. I think that second hit should have counted, but it didn't. And that deer's off into the ocean. That's the big problem that you're gonna run to. Is for whatever the reason, the deer tend to run into the ocean. Like, you will see a lot of deer up in the ocean, like, a lot of the time. Like, seriously, like, constantly. Watch. Every now and again when we're walking, I'll look into the ocean, and you'll see, like, 30 deer out in the ocean. I think they get out there, they need to put in a clipping plane just for deer. Like, a deer-specific clipping plane that stops them from, like being around so for right now I've got you ah all right and so I got you where I want you now I'm gonna eat you as the old child's joke goes I think I'll probably just turn that into sinew no don't go out into the ocean don't do it water is bad for deerses you will not enjoy your time there it's the worst place ever give me your body parts there we go am I full up on bones 
Ah, good. You know the adventure is coming to fruition when you end up with a, back full of, a backpack full of bone. So there it is. Let's go back to the camp right now, and I think I'm going to refill our gullet with lovely materials. And why we do that, apparently the rocks in this game, they run out of resources. I didn't know that. So this big rock right here, we ran out. If you wanted to see the pile that we have, I'll open my crafting interface so that we're here. This is everything that we got out of the rock wall. We got somewhere around 20-something flints. We got a whole bunch of rocks, some low-quality ore, nothing that's really worth keeping track of or tabs of. I'm just going to stack up all of our skulls over here, too, because we don't really need them that much. Some of them count as severed heads. Yeah, they count as human heads, but in your inventory, sometimes they're called skulls. We need it. I guess I'll make a tool pile over here. There we go. Now, any pile you sleep in is the tool pile. There's your insult comic of the day. If somebody was, like, watching me and just making their commentary from the back lines right now. We could make strong... We could make a small pouch right now. How many... What does it have, though? Is it is it better than the tattered bag? Because it's kind of a waste of my time if we... Eh. I feel very eh about it right now. And unfortunately, I think that what I'll try and do is let's take the deer meat. We'll cook that on up for later. Try and keep ourselves fed for right now. And you always want to eat this next to your fire if you're there at night. Because it will help you get yourself back up and running. You see our heat meters going up right there? That's what I tend to use it for. Let's go chop some trees. We're going to try and make our first lean-to so that we have a respawn point. So that God forbid, or Odin forbid, or Tyr forbid, or whoever forbids it right now. Whoever is in the Pantheon, like, making these decisions, he's up there, like, signing all the paychecks and, like, putting all the checks on paper. So that, like, whenever he comes around, he won't be bummed out about the fact that, you know... I think I'll probably put the lean-to just in the off chance that the wind decides to, over, like, about face and come from this direction. We'll put the lean-to on this side. I think that's wise. You can rotate it with the middle scroll bar. Which I didn't really know before today, but I'm going to pretend like I knew that. There we go. Throw some logs in there. Throw some sinews in there. And then we'll throw our sticks in. And there it is. We've got ourselves a lean-to. So now we can hang out and just, like, sit by the fire if we want to. And feel better about our life. Although we left some gaping holes in the sides. What I would try and do with this is I would actually burrow it into the earth. And then I would cover it. If we've already got, like, the random pieces of cloth and the random pieces of sinew and bone and... You know, the animal bits. I would actually cover the sides, too, because you don't want to underestimate how nice it would be to actually have kind of like a cylinder that runs underneath the earth of just, like, animal flesh. What that'll allow you to do is it'll catch heat inside of it from the fire, keep you nice and warm, although I probably would have put this a little bit closer, too. Although not before, maybe I put some dirt, some wet dirt, all over the side of the wooden parts just in case to make sure that it wouldn't get ignited. So the next thing that I would consider building... I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff that you could build in the game. I would say, like, a stone house. Oh, that's a lot bigger than I expected. And unfortunately, it's going to be blocked by a lot of random objects. But what we could do... Uh, we could put it right there. I mean, it'll be a little bit up and off the ground, but... I don't know. Maybe we'll put our house, like, over here somewhere, and we'll just maybe make a new fire. Either way, though, I'd like to get this up and running so that it's something that we have, like, as a long-term project to fiddle with while the game plays out. I don't think putting it on the beach this close to the tide is a good idea. But eh, we'll find a place for it. We'll find a place for it eventually. For right now, though, I think it's adventure time. We've got our stomach full. We've got our heat refilled. We need to find ourselves animals to kill, and I don't think we're going to find them around here. So I'm going to hold off a sprinting for right now. We've got about five minutes left in the episode. I had to make... See those deer right there? Like I said, there's always deer out in the ocean, and I don't really know why. They just always are. You see them all? There's like five of them out there. There's a whole bunch of them out there. But going into the water is going to lower your heat index by quite a bit. And they can continue to... I think they get stuck eventually. So this might not be a terrible plan to get ourselves some deer-related accessories if we can get out here. I'm going to try and see if we can jump across these rocks right here. I would also say that we might be able to try putting a fire in the water to see if that will keep us warm. Oh, that's way too quick. Nope. That's way too quick. We can't be had with that. Nope, not at all. Not even a tiny bit. I'm going to try and stay up on the side of the rocks right here. But yeah, that went down. You saw how quickly... Did you look up at the top left-hand corner? Our, our heat started going down. Really, we lost about 30% in under a second. Two seconds, maybe. I don't know. I'm bad at counting, so I try not to do it on camera. It's embarrassing, but eh. My, my alphabetics didn't go so well. My alphabetics and my numbers didn't go so well when I was off at school. Oh, there's a dog over there. Let's go fight with him. The dogs are nice because you don't have to chase them down. What the hell is that? Oh, a wolf. Oh, my God. He's camouflaged. Die, Wolfie. 
die! Oh my god, okay, I don't relish the thought of beating a dog to death, but if it's gonna attack me, I'm gonna attack it. Look, even the dogs go out into the ocean. I have no idea what this pull is, it's the call of Neptune, or Tuner, the, the call of Neptune. Neptune, it's just Neptune, but he uses a whole lot of tubing and a lot more toming. It's just, it is what it is. It's Neptune! Sounds like a little kid who heard it once, like, on talk radio or something. He's like, actually, I was in the car with Dad, and he was listening to a thing about Neptune. Uh, doesn't that sound like one of those random little egg corns that a little kid would make? I'm gonna try and see if I can draw this wolf. Hey! 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 Where you at, wolf? Hey! Hey! I'm trying to make, like, a DJ Mustard tune right now. That's all it is. Every DJ Mustard song is just boop, boop, boop. Hey! 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 Boop, 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 boop. Hey! 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 And right at the fourth, uh, right at the end of the bar, he'll be like, and he'll just like he'll drop it on in just every single time, every time, every song sounds the same. But they're all so good. That's the problem is he's like ACDC. Every song he makes might sound the same, but every song is awesome. Like that same song is super badass every single time. So it's like, eh, you let him get away with it. I'm gonna keep walking down the beach right here. We've got about a minute and a half left in the episode, so I hope I don't bore you with my random walks. I haven't seen any bears or anything, which is kind of like a strange thing. I saw glowing over here. What is this? Oh, there's a campfire. So lever, I hear something that way making a noise. Apparently, oh, a stone sword. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's let's equip a stone sword right now. That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, it makes a shing sound even though it's not like metal. I don't know. Maybe that's like it's a highlight. There's a lot of magnesiums or something up inside this thing. There's a deer off that way. And I hear gurgling from this direction. It looks like it might swing a little bit. There's definitely something up and in the forest, although I'd prefer to stay, like, near the beach because it makes it easier to see my prey. I like having visibility when I look upon mine enemies and I decide how I might strike them about their head, neck, and shoulders. Oh, there's definitely something over here. I don't know if it's like the... The dragon makes a really, really loud noise, and so sometimes you can hear him from a long ways off, almost to the point where it feels like a bug, maybe. Getting struck by the gub. That's how I'm gonna say it from now on. The gub is a mystical creature that strikes you with supernatural bugging abilities, and so I'll be like, we're being attacked by the gub. From now on, that's just what it is. Attacked by the gub. Feeling the love of the gub. What's on? Uh, I don't see anything else out here. Eventually, when you start going down the beach, you're going to stop running out of things that you run into because they haven't populated the world. It's going to be a little bit like Subnautica, where eventually you run out of real estate. And so you kind of want to turn back at that point and not get yourself too far off the beaten trail because it's more than possible to find yourself very, very dead in that situation. Let's eat some apples to get our... I don't know if it'll help with our warmth, but it'll help a little bit with our stomach. I wish, so, how I would basically rework the cold system right now is the cold system is pretty fast at the moment. And I don't know if it's necessarily something that I like or if it's something that I don't like. I'm not going to say an opinion on it, but for right now, I think that your cold drop-off should also draw slightly from how full your stomach is. The hell was that noise? Like an alien starship landing. I'm like, actually, that's just a cricket. If you'd ever been out in nature, you would know that, Splattercat. Well, there's going to be that guy down at the comments every time, too. Like, actually, that's just a cricket. We have them all over the place up here in, like, Utah. I'm like, all right, cool. I guess that I don't know what a cricket is. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Every time I walk through one of these, I don't know, what do you call these things? They're like bushes that have been overly afflicted with some kind of, like, stickish disease. They've been inflicted by the stick and tine. Anyways, every time you walk through a stick and tine bush, it seems to get me into trouble. It makes lots of crunching noises, and I think that something's hunting me when I am actually supposed to be the hunter. I figure what I'll do is I'll probably wander. Oh, there's a deer right there. Oh, that one has antlers. Does that mean he's looking around like in kind of a pensive state as well? He looks like he's looking around as though he's going to fight anything that runs up on him. I had a deer try to fight me one time. It was actually kind of scary. I had a I was during the mating season out by my parents' house, and I was out in the front yard. I was just trying to get something out of my car, and a deer, a buck was out there. Probably maybe like a, I don't know, like, my, I don't think he was an eight point. I think he's probably a six point. If you don't know what that means, a six point, duh, a six point buck means that he has six points on his antlers. He was a big guy, though. And he was not happy about my presence. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some experimentation right here. Do you fight? You do not. You fall over and die. Okay, that's fine by me. I don't care. That works out great for me. I'm gonna throw these logs on the ground because I have no use for them right now. No. Sounds like there's another one on our right too that we can make use of if we can cut through this bush. Hey pal. What you doing on this side of the tracks? Hey! What you doing, mine? What you doing, mine? What you doing on these sides of the tracks, mine? You know how we roll hard, ain't no deer allowed up in here because it's all day. We look at you sideways, look at you out the tinted window like what? 
Although there's no point mean mugging. Ow! Stop that. I strike you. Yes, it's time for you to go on strike as an undead being. That's some bone meal. I have no idea what that's for. That's an item that I'd actually never seen previously. A boar's tusk pouch. Well, one thing to know is that if we could find ourselves another boar's tusk, we haven't seen any boars around. And I don't know if you go deeper inland, you can find like worse creatures or how that works, but I guess we'll keep going this direction for right now. It seems like the deer have become armed as you get further and further on into land. I'm going to break the episode off right here. Maybe hunt a couple deer and just try and keep everything... You know, moving in one direction while I can. There we go. We got him. He tried to double back. That was his mistake right there. But anyways, I'm going to try and gather up some food so that we don't starve to death. Something so we can keep ourselves warm and keep a good meal in our gullet. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Savage Lands. I look forward to seeing you all in the future. Take care out there, everybody, and happy hunting.